This is a super special video uh, by request from a awesome friend and customer of ours. Her name is Perla and she recently purchased an airbrush system. Uh, so she asked me to show her how I set up. So I figured it's probably a good way to explain the system that I put together, how I set up my airbrush tattoos, what I look like on the job, so that if you bought a bunch of pieces and you're not quite sure you know what to do with them, hopefully this will inspire you. Now there are a million ways to set up an airbrush system, so don't get discouraged. I designed this case to work for me and the type of clientele and events that I'm doing. I do a lot of uh, festivals, fairs, busy events, which is why I have a big display board, which you'll see in a moment, um, and I work out of a six gun system. So you might find the system to be very practical for you, or you might find it to be too big for the type of events that you're doing. In any case, I hope that this video inspires you to create a system that works for you. And as always, if you need help, you have questions, you want to know about airbrushing, any of the above, connect with me on social media. I am here to help you. You can always contact me at Silly Farm um, because I kind of live here. That's what it feels like. But uh, more than anything, I'm your paint pal. So check out my blog. Check me out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those things. And of course, reach out to me should you need me. So, so let's start off with this. This is how I travel to my events. So I try to make one trip with everything that I do, being that time is of essence. Many times I'm booked back to back, or I just have to valet park my car because uh, I'm working at a hotel, do a lot of bar mitzvahs with my airbrush equipment. So it's important that I take one trip. Um, so I bungee everything to this little cart. I'm going to break it all down for you in a moment so you can see what each individual piece is. But this is my hoses and manifold, my compressor, my stencil boxes back here, and this is my case. It all rolls on this little cart that I got, I believe at Costco, uh, for about $20. And then this is my display board, which I will show you the setup in a moment as well. I also have a table, it is a four foot table or a three foot table, can't remember, and I bring a tablecloth, a black tablecloth, preferably. Um, I do contact my event planners and my agents and my party parents and ask them will they have a table, and I don't bring it if they are already going to provide one, but in the event that I don't know, I always come prepared and bring one anyways. Black being the preferable color because you're going to be working with paint and if you spill anything on it, you don't notice it right away. Um, Besides that, if you are going to be offering airbrush tattoos, you want to make sure that you have electricity. So another good thing to have with you is an extension cord because you want to be prepared. If you, um, or you can always have a CO2 tank which requires zero electricity. If you want to know more about CO2 tanks, definitely check out Cliff Turner's class about airbrush setting up on Fava TV. It is a great in-depth class that can explain a lot more. Because, because this tutorial, this video, is really just to show you how I set up my own personal system. So thanks for joining me and Perla, I hope you enjoy this video. So the first thing that I do when I get to the job is I start getting set up. So I set up my table and I lay out all of my supplies. You can take your compressor immediately and put it underneath your table because you're not going to need it until the very end when you connect your hoses to your compressor and you plug it in. So that's the first thing that you can kind of put away. The second thing you can put to the side is your stencil box. Now obviously mine is pretty large because I have a lot of stencils you're going to see pretty soon. Um, I file them in individual files uh, according to my banner which you're going to see in a moment and then they're all inside of here. Um, so have tons of different stencils of all different sizes, but I keep them in this file box just to keep them organized. Um, it's pretty simple for me, pretty sturdy. I don't lose any of them. And I'm a person who tends to lose a lot of my supplies, so this box works out really good for me. But you won't need it while you're setting up because you're going to only use your stencils once you begin. I carry all of my hoses inside of this bag. Uh, mainly to protect them, to make it easy. I, you can carry them any way you want, but this bag I got for free, I think at Macy's when I got them perfume over Christmas. So it's a pretty big bag, it's durable, it's like almost waterproof. So I carry my extension cord, my, my hoses, my manifold, 
and a couple of other supplies inside of it and it's pretty big can carry everything um, some of the things that you want to have with you um, a towel uh, I carry like an extra drop cloth just in case I'm in an area with really nice floors and you always just want to be prepared but I tape regular tape plumbers tape and then I also, as I stated, carry my hoses. I use a six gun. I use six guns at a time. So this is a silly for a manifold. And what it is, is uh, a manifold is nothing more than an air splitter. So it allows you to run several guns out of the compressor and split up the air in six different ways. Now, this is a manifold that I designed, um, well, that I put together more than designed, and it has six um, areas for hoses, and then one that I put, or six areas for guns, and one to connect to your compressor. It does not matter which uh, order it's in, doesn't matter which um, port you use for what. Um, the beauty of this type of manifold is that they're self-sealing pneumatic fittings. So what I mean by that is if you're only going to set up one gun, you would only connect one hose. So even though there's no hose connected in here, it seals itself. So you can hook up one gun, five guns, four guns, it doesn't matter. If there's nothing inside of the port, there's no air being released. So this is a really good, it's a steel manifold. We construct them so they're like indestructible uh, and it's a really good long lasting. Now I wrap all of my hoses in with Teflon tape, plumber's tape, because I use a lot of events outside or I do a lot of events outside so it really helps to keep like moisture from rusting and such. The first thing I like to do is get all my hoses out and I keep them attached to my manifold. I unscrew them from my, ho from my guns, but I keep them attached to my manifold because you don't really need to take this apart unless you don't want to use all the guns. And I lay them out and on the other end ends that you're going to connect to your airbrush guns. So I take all of the ends and I take my airbrushes that I store inside of my kit. And I'm going to explain this kit in just a moment. I store my clean airbrush guns after I clean them inside of this bank uh, bag. You can store them any way you want. I just like something flat so that it fits nicely inside of my case. And it's padded so that helps too. So what I like to do is just take my guns and I start connecting them to the hoses. Now there is a piece that goes right here, it's called a quick disconnect, and it's the gun to hose version of the manifold to hose. So it's a quick disconnect, there's no screwing and unscrewing. Personally I don't like to use them very much because I have a lot of leakage with them, but it's a personal choice if you like them by, any, by all means just use so them. So once I have all of my guns connected, then I open up my case, which happens to be already open now, and I set it up for you guys. So this is a case that I designed, okay? I designed this particular insert right here. I had it made for other airbrush artists, because what I was finding is, when I tried to develop my first airbrush setup, was I was finding it hard to create a tabletop system that looked organized, professional. So I took this case, and I had this piece made. This is a custom piece. It's made out of a nice... Um, acrylic, black acrylic, so it cleans very easily and has different compartments. It also has holes to hold your paint. So I have it and it fits directly inside of my case and then the lid acts as a place where I can store business cards, I can put, you can put your airbrushes. If you want to hold them inside of here you can. They can fit and hold right inside of there. That part is up to you. You can put whatever you want in there. If you don't want people to see this side, we also include with this case um, a sign. You can have this sign say whatever you want. Uh, we have generic ones that say airbrush tattoos or airbrush face and body art. And then you can just flip it over and you can leave it like this during your event so that nobody can see behind it if you have things to hide. 
but inside of your case is great because you can store gloves. You want to have gloves in your kit so you don't get your hands dirty. You can store alcohol wipes, glitter, anything that you want inside of your kit um, can fit right inside here and it's a nice tabletop system. The other beauty of this system is that you're going to work right out of it. So once I have my hoses connected, I'm just going to take a blast cap uh, and take my paint, unscrew it, stick the blast cap in, connect it directly to my hose, just like that. And then I just hang my hose right here. I just put my paint right at the end of my airbrush system. Work directly out of it. So if I'm sitting, if I'm standing, I just pick up the paint, put it back down as necessary. It's not gonna fly anywhere, it's not gonna fall off the table. They fit securely and nicely inside of your kit and it looks professional as well. So once I have my gun set up, the next thing that I do is take my the uh, manifold and I hide it underneath the table. So once you connect all your airbrushes and you're ready to go inside of your case, even though I just set up one, normally I set up six, then you're going to take your extra hose that's connected to your manifold and, you're, and it has a larger output. So it's going to go directly onto your compressor. What this does is it splits up all of the air into six different ports so that you can run six guns at a time. Now once I get my compressor going, what I like to do is I like to turn it on and I like to test that all my guns are working, which is why I use a towel or paper towel and I test them on my arms, troubleshoot them, fix anything that might need fixing. My last thing that I do before I set up my whole system and open for business is I set up my banner, which I'm gonna show you next. I always put it up last because if you put it up first and kids are around or adults are around and they start gathering around you and they distract you from getting set up. So I like then I add my stencil box right next to me so that it's easy to get to. Now, when I'm airbrushing, since I'm a lefty, I like to work from the left side so that I can pick up my airbrushes, spray the person. I like to sit, I typically like them to stand, but this has to be a preference for you. Remember with your airbrushes, there's a little hole on your, on your bottle, on your blast cap. So if you start working at this level or at this angle or tipping too much, what's gonna end up happening is you're going to be spilling your paint and you don't wanna do that. So I like to make sure that I'm always working at a nice upright position. At the very least, I will work heading downward, but you definitely don't wanna be hitting too many angles because you're just gonna spill your paint. Now once I have all my airbrushes set up and ready to go, the last thing that I do is I set up my banner. Now I have a retractable banner, it's made, I had it printed out of a vinyl um, and I'll show you how I set it up. And the reason that I love this uh, banner more than anything else is because it's very impressive. It can be seen from afar, it's good for all weather. Now some people say, do you need that many stencils? and choices, and the answer is no. But because I'm charging more for my services, I think it's important to have an impressive setup and for people to see a lot of choices because then they usually feel that it's associated with the value of my services. So, let me show you my banner. As you can see, this is a pretty tall setup. But for me, I really like this setup, as I said. It's large, it's big, it's a lot of people can see it, both from a distance and when they're waiting in line. Now, so the cool thing about these banners is that we design them here, so you can put your name on the top of it if you have um, a company name, and I can help you with that. You can pick out all the stencils that you want. Um, I have a good mixture of stencils, I, but this is a banner that I work off of, and each of these are labeled. I know it's hard to see from there. But this is a one, a two, so that when I, when somebody comes up and they choose what they want, if they tell me I want number one, I go in the file of number one and just pull it out, and then I have it available for me. And when I'm done, I simply put it back in. That way I keep myself from losing any stencils, and they all stay inside of my box. There are several ways to simplify this system and not make it as big, but this particular system works for me and the clientele that I'm marketing to. So I hope that you enjoyed this glimpse into my airbrush system, the way that I transport it, set it up, and present it on the job. If you have questions, as always, reach out to me. I am always happy to help you and answer any questions that you might have. Have a great day and happy painting, guys!